Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at choosewood.com. It's Thursday, September 22nd. This is The Gateway. I'm Wayne Pratt. A new Missouri law makes it a crime to give students some books. St. Louis Public Radio has learned police visited a local school librarian months before it went into effect after callers accused her of giving pornography to children. Those conversations did not lead to any materials being removed, but they have made librarians throughout the state concerned about the potential stakes of the new law. We do stand for intellectual freedom. We do stand for the freedom to read. Coming up, an exclusive report from St. Louis Public Radio's Kate Grumke on what happened in one local school district last year. Missouri Governor Mike Parson's goal of passing an income tax cut and a series of agriculture tax credits is a step closer now that the state Senate has passed two bills during the special session. St. Louis Public Radio's Sarah Kellogg reports. Senators voted 24 to 4 to pass the bill containing a permanent income tax cut and 26 to 4 on the legislation with the agricultural tax credits. Under their proposed income tax cut, which is estimated to cost the state around $950 million, the individual income tax rate will lower to 4.95% starting in 2023. The rate could go as low as 4.5% if the state clears other economic triggers over the years. The cut did receive some votes from Democrats, including Senate Minority Leader John Rizzo. This tax cut is the way it was done is the least damaging that could have been done, especially when you consider some of the proposals that we heard yesterday going to zero, like Kansas. Other Democrats voted against the cut, saying the state's surplus could be spent elsewhere. In Jefferson City, I'm Sarah Kellogg, St. Louis Public Radio. St. Louis County police officers assigned to two precincts could be in new buildings by early 2024. County Executive Sam Page has announced the construction timeline For the long-delayed Afton Southwest and North County precincts, work will start this week on Afton Southwest and be finished by next December. North County will be under construction by November and wrapped up by early 2024. Officers are currently working in rented spaces that were retrofitted to serve as police precincts. County Police Association President Joe Patterson says they don't have enough desks, storage, or places to meet with the community. We're putting community policing as, a, as our priority number one in St. Louis County. We need to be able to engage the community. We need to be able to invite them to our home. It's their building after all. The $28 million cost for the new buildings will be covered by the public safety sales tax. Nearly $40 million in federal money will flow into Missouri and Illinois to build high-speed Internet networks in rural areas. As St. Louis Public Radio's Jeremy Goodwin reports, U.S. Secretary of Agriculture Thomas Vilsack announced the mix of loans and grants this morning. Most of the funds come from low-interest loans to telecommunications providers in Jackson and Randolph counties in Illinois and Missouri's Barton County. $2.2 million in grants will help connect homes, businesses, and farms in Missouri's Monroe and Randolph counties. Phil Sack says the broadband networks will create the opportunity for families, businesses, schools, healthcare facilities to have the latest and best technology uh, to be able to access the distance learning, the telemedicine, the business opportunities, and, and the, the needs of families. The funding comes from a program Congress established in 2019. The bipartisan infrastructure law this year included another $65 billion to expand high-speed Internet access. I'm Jeremy Goodwin, St. Louis Public Radio. People in the St. Louis region can be eligible for limited doses of the monkeypox vaccine by confirming they've been exposed to someone with the virus or by proving they are at high risk of infection. Some worry health officials could discourage people in the LGBTQ community by asking about sexual behavior. St. Louis Public Radio's Sarah Fenton reports. The federal government's approved the vaccine for high-risk individuals. Right now, that's mainly people who identify as gay men, transgender, bi, and other queer identities. To determine if someone's high risk, the state requires vaccine seekers to fill out an online form that includes questions about people's sexual behavior and identity. Shira Berkowitz is policy and advocacy director for Proma Missouri. They say the form could keep people from seeking the vaccine because they don't want to share their sexual information with the state. They say officials should go to where people are. Making mm. sure that they're just an accessibility to the vaccine without having to disclose if you've slept with anyone recently that has been in contact with the virus. There are 84 confirmed cases of monkeypox in Missouri. 
I'm Sarah Fenton, St. Louis Public Radio. It's now a crime in Missouri to provide students with visual depictions of things like genitals or sex acts. Parents who were filing book challenges last school year can now file criminal complaints involving illustrated novels. As St. Louis Public Radio's Kate Grumke reports, law enforcement in at least one local school district questioned some books before the new law went into effect. In response to the new law, librarians across Missouri have been going page by page through books. One librarian who wanted to remain anonymous sent a recording of the process to St. Louis Public Radio. You can hear them flipping through pages, looking for anything that could get them in legal trouble. But now St. Louis Public Radio has confirmed that well before the law was enacted, people had already been calling the police about books they thought were inappropriate. At least one police officer responded by visiting a librarian. The officer stationed at Wentzville's Liberty High School went to talk to the school's librarian about the books in her collection twice last school year. The officer is employed by both the Wentzville School District and the O'Fallon Police Department. An O'Fallon Watch commander says the visits were for the officer's own understanding of the books the parents complained about. And a school district spokesperson characterizes the visits as, quote, informal conversations between two co-workers but the librarian remembers the situation differently. She didn't want to be named because she's afraid for her safety. She told St. Louis Public Radio that she agreed the discussions were casual, but added that it felt, quote, scary and surreal to have a police officer walk into her library because someone accused her of giving pornography to kids. This happened at a time when Wentzville school board meetings had become very contentious, with parents showing up to denounce books. I'm going to read out loud some sexually explicit uh, content. I don't know how many more books are like that. We're going to find out. How can this be allowed? It is criminal. No further action was taken by the police department in response to the complaints, and no reports were filed. But a similar situation might go another way today because of Missouri's new law. If teachers, librarians, or other school officials are charged with giving a student a sexually explicit book, they could face up to a year in jail or a $2,000 fine. In the St. Louis area, at least seven school districts have removed almost 40 titles so far this year alone. The vast majority are illustrated novels. An internal document shows more than 200 books are being reviewed in the Wentzville School District because of the new law. Librarians worry this is a slippery slope. We do stand for intellectual freedom. We do stand for the freedom to read. Melissa Corey is president of the Missouri Association of School Librarians and says she and her colleagues go through a careful review process to make sure their books are age appropriate and represent diverse viewpoints. Reading is the most important way to develop empathy for others. Um, We have books being published by individuals that even 20 to 30 years ago would not have been published. So far, the majority of the books districts pulled were written by or about LGBTQ people or people of color. But the advocates for the new law say it's not about that. I don't care about sexual identity or sexual orientation. For me, that is not a factor. That's Andy Wells, president of the Missouri chapter of No Left Turn in Education. The national group has a rating system for books it considers inappropriate. Wells pushed for the new law but wants the Missouri legislature to go further than just visuals. He wants a law against written text he thinks is explicit. This is the first, I hope, of more legislation that will get graphic information out of children's hands. He's also been encouraging parents to go to the police about this. The O'Fallon Police Department says moving forward, these types of complaints will be handled by the school district. But in a statement, the St. Charles Prosecuting Attorney's Office seemed to suggest it would consider cases under this new law. The office's spokesperson said they will review a case's merits individually if law enforcement brings it to them. They said they wouldn't be establishing bright-line rules around the issue. I'm Kate Grumke, St. Louis Public Radio. Kate has much more at stlpr.org. This story was produced in partnership with the Midwest Newsroom, an investigative journalism collaboration that includes St. Louis Public Radio. Amy Mayer edited that story. The Gateway is a production of St. Louis Public Radio, a listener-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt. Have a great day.
Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at choosewood.com.